Hey there folks, Daniel Futter with Calibre Magazine and a real quick update on C21 for June 14th. Been a little bit, but that's because C21 hasn't really made a lot of progress. Um, so this isn't so much a progress report if you're scared tuning in thinking, oh my god, it's happening. No, it's not. It's still parked in front of the Senate um, in debate for second reading. So that means that they are still um, chit-chatting about it before everyone sticks their hands up and decides whether or not they want to send it to committee uh, or end it right there. Uh, the reason why it's languishing there in second reading is just time management. There's a lot of things for the Senate to discuss, and their sessions are not super long, typically. There's a lot of preamble. If you look at their order paper, there's quite a lot of stuff at the beginning of it that is question period and, and all the other stuff that goes on. Today, there was this massive committee of the whole thing where they, they talked about a new role. Um, so by the time they get to the government business side of things, there's usually not a lot of time left on the clock. So today, for example, um, for those of you that aren't familiar, the way the Senate schedule works is it goes through all the preamble type things, then you get to the government business. They go straight to the government's bills, and they start with the bills that are closest to the finish line, so the ones that are awaiting third reading in the Senate. There are two of those currently. Uh, I think it's Bill C-13 and C-45. Don't ask me what they're about because they're beyond my purview, um, and I got a lot going on, so I cannot be reading about random legislation. Uh, but today, basically, they got a little bit through some debate on both of them before adjourning debate on both and then the entire session. Um, C21 would have been the next thing on the order paper had they managed to get there. So it's not like it's a million miles away from where they're getting, but they didn't get there today. Um, they did yesterday, but they adjourned debate on it yesterday. Um, today they didn't get to it, tomorrow, who knows? Uh, the important part for everyone to realize is that there are only 12 working days effectively left for the Senate, and not all of those are true working days. Um, the Senate has, I believe, three uh, mandatory sitting days a week. Um, usually on the Monday and the Friday, it's a possible sitting day if they have more business to discuss. Because there is so much business to discuss, you can expect them to use all of their potential sitting days. But one of the Mondays between now and the 30th of June, when they rise for the summer recess, um, is neither a mandatory nor a possible sitting day. The only thing they could use that day for would be uh, committee hearings, because committees can meet uh, any given day. Um, and for those that are super unfamiliar, the Senate committee that will be discussing Bill C-21 is known as SECD. I have literally no idea why that acronym is that, because the name for it is the Senate Standing Committee on National Defense, or National Security Defense and Veterans Affairs. Um, something to that effect. Long story short, I can't figure out where the SEC or D basically come from. Um, I'm going to guess it's French, so we'll leave it at that. Um, but that was a bit of a say, <laughs> never mind. Long story short, SECD will be discussing C21 when it does get through second reading, but with so few days left in the Senate sitting calendar for them to debate and pass this uh, bill to second reading and get it to a committee, um, the SECD committee can't actually be scheduled to start discussing C21, obviously, until it passes second reading. That would be a bit prejudicial on the part of the government uh, otherwise. So the question that I've had, and I've tabled this to the, a few uh, senators and government staff that I know, is uh, how long it would take the Senate subcommittee that um, would effectively assemble SCCD and get them down to work of debating C21, uh, how long the lead time is for them. Because sometimes, um, as we saw in the SECU meetings with Parliament, um, when the Liberals asked for the study motion where they would have to travel and go study the effects of Bill C21, that required the parliamentary subcommittee uh, to put aside funding for the trips and stuff. And that had, I think, a two or three month lead time on that because that subcommittee only met a few times a year. So I'm not sure if the Senate operates in the same way or if that subcommittee doesn't have a meeting so you can't get SECD together. I'm not sure. That would be unlikely to me. Um, but who knows? Uh, historically speaking, there's not a lot of data, but in 2019, it was reported that the Senate was taking on average about 31 days to get a bill through. We're sitting right around, I think, about 28 or 29 or so from when C-29 was read for the first time. But obviously in 2019, that average was based on averages, um, and C-21 is not the average bill. It's a very controversial bill. Um, it generates a metric ton of headlines, and it will have huge ramifications for the independent senators group, the progressive senators group, uh, any of the conservative senators, and they're, they're all going to um, be feeling the effects of this because it's a huge piece of legislation, um, and they all know this. Um, so I think it's going to be quite interesting to see. And long story short, what we're getting to is that with so few days left in their calendar and such a large controversial controversial bill ahead of them, plus the very publicly stated opposition to it from senators like Don Plett saying that, you know, the fact that this was stop, start, and rushed through in the very end 
um, by Parliament and kind of rammed through with limited debate by the Liberals is all the more reason for the Senate to use as much time as they can to study this. Um, thank you, Don Plett, for, for those comments. That um, this is not going to take the average amount of time. So it seems unlikely that C-21 is going to get through the Senate by the uh, summer recess, which means effectively C-21 will likely not be going anywhere before the fall session, which kicks us closer and closer towards A, a potential proroguement, because a proroguement would likely kill Bill C-21. Um, proroguement, uh, private, my under this is where it gets tenuous, and I'm only saying this because people have been asking a lot. I, this is how my understanding of it. I'm sure people will tell me I'm wrong. Um, but after a bit of research, it seems like government bills die when a, when government prorogues. Private members' bills can be maintained, um, and a few other things can too through special circumstances. And government bills could be brought back through unanimous consent, but obviously with the Conservative Party merely existing, that seems highly unlikely. So prorogement um, without C-21 having reached the third reading um, would kill it, and it seems to be one of their marquee pieces of legislation for the next campaign. So um, it's going to be very interesting to see how this all shakes out. Long story short, um, the further down the road this gets kicked, the less likely it is to happen, especially given current polling. Uh, the NDP is up huge, the Liberals are down big. I'm sure the NDP, I'm sure even them, uh, should be smelling blood in the water by now, uh, getting more tempting to pull that pin and go for an election. So who knows how things will shake out. But long story short, point of this video, primarily that C21 is still working its way through the Senate, albeit slowly, and the Senate's clock is kind of running out. At the same time, the second portion of this video is that um, things are not good for Marco Mendicino right now on account of both everything from the Chinese influence story and his implications to that, which is expanding seemingly daily, um, to the more recent story that Paul Bernardo was moved to a medium security facility, which obviously has nothing to do with guns or anything really, but um, obviously Marco Mendicino does, and therefore this has to do with him, that when he found out, it was apparently back in May, and uh, he expressed surprise and shock and disgust when the news came out last week. And then tonight, just a few minutes ago, we found out the Prime Minister actually did the same thing, that he was informed in March that Bernardo would likely be moved to a medium security facility, and expressed the shame, shock, and disgust upon the initial news breaking last week. So both of them are going to be facing some significant questions about that um, tomorrow, and whenever the Prime Minister faces significant questions, uh, I expect they normally would go for a gun bill, but since there's one currently trying to work through the Senate, which they don't have a ton of control over, um, he might just throw that bus in reverse, and I'm not sure if Marco Mendicino can hear the beeper from his riding there in Toronto, but um, there might be a bus coming out of Gatineau and backwards real quick. So if that were to happen, everything gets shaken up, because Marco Mendicino was also supposed to be the minister in charge of reforming the Canadian Firearms Advisory Committee, for example. Um, and if he loses the role and we have a new person parachuted in that's unfamiliar, uh, there's going to be some time uh, between now and that person getting up and running, getting that committee up and running. Uh, and when the recommendations from that committee are expected August 8th for uh, guns to ban, delays now are, that's not far away and this government doesn't move fast. So um, a lot of things seem to be up in the air for this government at a time when they really would prefer them not to be. So that's good news for us. Um, so that's kind of where it stands now. I think uh, I'm not sure Marco Minicino necessarily has the time or the capacity to put the pressure on senators to push his bill through the Senate when he's got, uh, he'll be answering these questions tomorrow and probably for the next few days. So it's going to be a very interesting time for gun owners. I suggest a lot of folks uh, keep a weather eye on the ground and, and sort of see what happens because things could get quite interesting here with proroguement, uh, potentially even election writs. Who knows? Crazier things have happened. So I'll keep an eye out. We'll keep doing those videos uh, as things happen. Obviously, uh, I was feeling a little bit guilty because it's been a little bit since I've done one and I was trying to do more and more of them, but without anything happening, it was a little bit tough to justify. However, I am going to try and break these videos up. Um, so these are just going to be little political updates. So I'm going to be stopping this video in the next few seconds. And if you're interested in the caliber stuff, where we're at with production, which we are back into print, uh, we are going to be doing the garage sale. So some of these things back here, you might be able to win or buy. Um, we got a bunch of other stuff too. Like, man, let me tell you, you do 10 years of testing stuff. You amass more tack vests, belts, Google's goggles, optics than you can possibly use. And so we're going to, we're going to get some of those out the door. Um, but I'm going to break those up into a whole second, probably more vloggy content. Maybe we'll even go on a motorcycle ride. Who knows? Um, but I'm going to keep the political stuff concise. So I'm going to stop that there. Thank you all for watching. Uh, not, like I said, quick summation, not a whole lot to report, but we are kind of, the clock is running out. Um, and the temperature is heating up for the, the members of parliament there from the Liberal Party of Canada. So we'll see how things shake out. Thank you for watching so much. Um, if you want to support what we're doing, 
The only thing we got is subscribe to the magazine. And if you do, you will actually start to receive the game because we're back in print for the next six months. We're doing six issues, uh, July through December. And then we'll be hopefully back to one every two months and I can slow down a bit. But for now, you're going to get one a month. Uh, you'll still get your six. And that's about the only thing you can do to support us is buy a subscription. Or uh, the other thing is if you have one and you read Caliber, um, flip through there, find an advertiser and either email them and thank them for supporting us or buy something from their store because uh, they're supporting us as well. Uh, it's their advertising funds and your guys' subscription funds is what keeps us going. So um, much appreciated for all that. I will see you guys next time there's news or if there's something coming that might kind of influence it, sort of like this Paul Bernardo Mendicino resignation story. You better believe if Mendicino resigns, there's going to be a video. So I'm going to go upstairs, have some supper. Hope you guys had a great uh beginning of the week, had a good weekend. Uh, look after yourselves, take some time for your mental health guys, because that's really important as always, going to keep drilling it in everyone's head. Take the time, you got to make it because it doesn't happen. Um, no one ever has time to take the dog for a walk or spend a half hour under their car in the garage, but you got to make the time for yourself, you owe it to yourself. So do that, I will see you guys next time. And uh, yeah, peace, have a good one. Thanks guys.